Brenda McLaughlin and Niall Miller are so of the Leitrim landscape they are sometimes hard to see. It's not that they are trying to hide, they just don't try to stand out. Like the materials they use in their art, they too change with the seasons. Chance or maybe fate has played a large part in Colette Langan's life, but a dogged determination not to be put in a box simply because she is a woman has played an even bigger part, and I'm not sure she realises that. Some things Seamus Dunbar says are actually written in stone, and yet his footprint is hard to see. Jackie McKenna said, come to Leitrim, we can do something there, and he did, and they certainly did. Steffi Otto has spent hours and hours in barns with older men, always older men, because they have the old crafts to teach and old stories to tell with rushes and straw and green, green wood. Trying to pen Fiona Mulholland in is an exhausting and pointless exercise. Fiona moves freely, conceptualising and creating, breaking boundaries, presenting the future. Leitrim has shaped Max Brosey, as Max Brosey now shapes his vessels. An only child in a rural landscape, surrounded by wet wood, he learned fast to fashion what he needs from what he has. And Britain took a very long route to satisfy the artists within. Thirty years on New York stress, now she paints in a drummer hair kitchen and inks up in Manor Hamilton. When Pete Cairn came to 1980s Leitrim, everyone else was leaving. Pete needed the glow of a coloured candle for his glass of wine and his good book, so Rainbow Candles was born. A tailor's dummy in Maria Noonan McDermott's Kinlock studio gives a hint of her past. Just as her seashells and wild flowers tell the story of her present, Maria paints the day she has wandered through. Barbara Kennedy's colourful childhood is straight over a Mark Twain novel. And now those colours present in her work. The blue of the River Shannon, the brown of the mountain and the roses for the Wild Rose County. Kate Murta Sheridan followed many paths before she found the one to Leitrim. She has made peace with the weeds, she says, and now they adorn her plastered frames, brushed and rubbed, and leaving their mark for all to see. Catherine Gray learned much from the children as she taught them art. Their bravery and adventurism inspired her, and she experimented and started to paint and started to draw, to draw with tread. Roy Humphrey's family have worked with wood for four generations, but Roy would never fell a tree. The storm does that. And down they come like big fallen bears, along the Long Avenue. The Leitrim landscape rolls right up to Lucinda Lee's back door and it soothes her, allowing her to mix and blend and boil and infuse and create a home for her girls.